position here, but if I have been here and I have that you were able to make it, uh, rainy days, no accidents. <coughs> Tonight is the, today is the day after that, so I don't know, uh, is it coincidence that this came to prayer? Or you chose purposely? Not coincidence. Okay, so coincidence means that our mentors have inspired us. And close to Halloween also. So this uh, this lecture it's about reincarnation, a uh, topic that we all, most of us love uh, this topic. And Katie read uh, the text from Emmanuel, where Jesus talks about the law of return. And it's very interesting how Emmanuel says that uh, this point of the resurrection for all. So when Jesus says. Those who have done good will rise to live, and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. So this is interesting how even those who didn't have done good, they also will rise to be condemned. And then Emmanuel analyzes the, uh, the concept of uh, reincarnation he is here. It's not the turn of sorrow. So if we don't do it good, if we are lazy, or if we are uh, very attached to our ego, we still will rise again, and we are going to have the remedies, and we are going to relearn the lesson again and again and again, as long as we need. And this is very congruent with the belief that we have our Father, that Jesus taught, that really loves us, and He is always there, always here with us. So the, the approach for tonight, uh, we can, uh, there's, this, this theme is so broad, it's kind of hard to cover so many things, uh, philosophical, we can cover uh, science, um, historical. So we're going to cover just one perspective of the law of re uh, return incarnation, reincarnation. So this perspective, we're going to just uh, have a, a base of communication. So uh, when I'm going to talk about reincarnation, I'm, I'm going to bring some concepts to the world, a passage from the Bible. We have a video uh, with Jesus and Nicodemus. And then number two, we're going to um, uh, review some of the criteria that Allan Kardec used to decide what can be accepted as true or not. And then number three, it's one plus two, right? So is it right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it, we will, we're going to apply this, those criteria that Allan Kardec suggested and to reincarnation, to the belief of reincarnation to help us to decide uh, if you want to believe, or if you already believe, to believe even more, or different parts of our brain, of our soul, of our mind, too. And, but again, uh, Spiritist Doctrine is not, uh, not telling you have to believe, you have to follow, and this, this and that. Uh, we just said that uh, God will give us many chances, and there are many ways that we can get to the, the complete happiness is how we understand the perfection when we are free for our impurities. And it's a work of lives. Okay. So, and it is based on the book, Our Daily Bread. It's other version. Here's Kader guy reminding us Our Daily Bread. And so here first for reincarnation. So this thing is a uh, passage on the Bible. Where Jesus says, Very, very, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in that time, uh, seems like they maybe didn't have the word reincarnation. Um, but be born again uh, is literally uh, something that means maybe the same thing. At least this is how we interpret it. And there it is. Jesus said that. In... Some of Christians, uh, the majority of Christians, they believe that this interpretation of this passage is figurative. It's interesting how some other passages in the Bible, um, they, uh, some people interpret in uh, literally. And this specific one is figurative. So they believe to be born again um, from the water, so they believe that's the baptism. Basically, if I accept Jesus, I accept God, I'll go and I'm baptized on the water, and then I'm saved. I'm free from my sins, I'm forgiven. And 
this belief, um, it's, it gives us some hope, right? Um, if I made mistakes, I still have a second chance. So, um, in the same time, my takeaway of responsibility. So I don't need to fix the root cause of my mistakes. I just need to believe and I'm forgiven. And I'm forgiven. And in Spiritism, it's a doctrine that this is more responsibility. So if I make a mistake, I'm forgiven. If I truly, uh, I, I regret that I did. But then I have to prepare. And why repair? Because I got to fix in the root cause. So which part of me is causing this behavior that caused some damage to the other or to myself. And then once I fix the word cause, I'm not going to repeat again. So let's see the video. Jesus and Nicodemus. So the Bible says that Nicodemus, so Nicodemus was a senator. Um, yeah. He's coming. So in the middle of the night, he was like a ruler of the Pharisees. And they used to be used to live for the external appearances, external things. So he went to visit Jesus at night, so the others wouldn't know that he went there. He was truly interested in learning, but he still was worried about the appearances. Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles which thou doest, except God be with him. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. How can these things be? Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So, you are the master, um, doctor of the law, and you don't know what this means. So, it's believed that uh, some Jews, they have the concept of reincarnation. Um, and others, this is Alan Kardec uh, in the Gospel according to Spiritism. Thank you. So, um, they believe in the concept of resurrection, but it's not so clear when it happens and how it happens. And then Jesus goes and asks, if you don't know about these things, how can we talk about the heavenly things? So, I recommend going to the Gospel according to Spiritism, and Alan Kardec goes and deeper analyzes uh, this passage. We're going to go forward. And we go. We shall go back to this again later. So here, that reincarnation. I want to bring this this idea here. Why we talk about reincarnation? So the we here 
what does the we brings to us? What, what, which things? Repetition. Exactly. So doing again. And we can make a, a, some kind of deep analysis. Uh, re, the repetition, is deeply uh, transmitting us that our father, uh, so he's good. He gives us a second chance. So in just a small part of the world, we have God's uh, mercy, uh, his love. We can make, we can make mistakes and go again. And we have the free will. We can make choices. So we, if I make mistakes, it's because I have the option of making it. And then in. What can the in communicate? Inside. Right. So here we can also analyze this. In the inside of us, uh, or inside of us, uh, there is a spirit. We are spirits. So spirit is not physically located. It's uh, abstract. And it's hard for us to understand exactly what it is, so we can uh, just make some analogies. And carnis, from all of this from Latin, Latin, right? So carnis, what is carnis? The body. The body, yeah, the flesh. Uh, flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the body. So uh, let's make uh, this analogy. Uh, so Alan Kardec talks about reincarnation like a school. Like we go to school, we... What is the goal of reincarnation? Learn. One of the goals, to learn, right? To evolve, um, to develop, to love. What else? Any other goals? To uh, expiate. To expiate. To expiate what? Uh, our wrongdoings from mm. past lives. Okay, so why do we expiate wrongdoings from past lives? So we can move on and, and uh, Better. And don't repeat. Yeah. And don't repeat. Okay. So those are many goals um, of incarnation, right? So basically, the idea of to learn and to evolve is behind them. Um, can we evolve in the spiritual world? Yes. So we still have reincarnation, right? So what is the difference between an incarnated spirit and a disincarnated spirit? There's only one thing. If you think about math, there's only one element that's there. One has, and the other one doesn't have. The body, right? So a spirit plus body is incarnated spirit. Yes. Uh, incarnated spirit minus body is a disincarnated spirit. <coughs> so body, uh, Alan Kardec in the, I believe it's in the Genesis, he says that the body uh, will push us to evolve. So it's kind of like the idea, like we're kind of lazy to evolve. We want to evolve, we like to evolve, we like to learn. But we somehow a little bit lazy, we need some push and we need help from others, from our society. So the body will help us to evolve because the body gives us needs, right? I have to eat, uh, there's a uh, law of conservation, protect my body, and because I have to eat, I have to work, and I develop my intellectual. In the beginning, most, most of the physical, but then we, uh, we have the law of progress inside of us. So we always want to make something better, uh, easier way to do it, less effort. So uh, what else? Law of reproduction. So once we have a family, then we have to take care of family, and then we develop love, we develop uh, solidarity, understanding, respect, communication. So the, the body helps us to evolve. I, we can say maybe faster or more efficiently. And everything in nature is efficient, right? Um, the animals, they don't, uh, natural, natural environment, they will not eat to starve. I mean, eat to start doesn't make sense, but eat to uh, become so big that they can't move. They eat all they need because they need the energy to run away and to protect their children, etc. So, um, and the other thing is uh, the, the analogy back to the school analogy. So, let me ask, um, so Anna, you love your both children, right? And they, they have to go to school, right? Um, do, do, do you want them to go to school? Uh, do you send, I mean, yeah. yeah, you. And why do they go to school? To learn. To learn. So similar to incarnation, right? And then, the, do they like to go to school? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So like, we may like to go incarnate. We like to evolve. We like to learn. But they have to go, right? 
It's not like you every day. If you don't want to go, you don't have to go. Yeah. No. So they have to go. So the same thing. We we have to we have to learn, and kind of like incarnation gives us the push. Even though we like, uh, we still have to go. If we would, if what would happen to kids if you tell them, even though they like to go to school, we don't have to go. What would they do? My kids. Yeah. Get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's good. Uh, if they if they say they stay at home uh, studying by themselves without guidance, how would it be? Would they learn the same way? How would not? Yeah. Um, so even even uh, us. Uh, so that's the same idea for us incarnation. We we need each other to learn. We love each other, and we we all kind of like organized in hierarchy. So we we all receiving help from somebody uh, like our mentors. And we are also helping others. And even if you think like, oh, but that person is really, really tough, and how can... Well, that person has a dog. That person is helping the dog to evolve, too. So incarnation is action. So we learn the body will put us into action. So now the criteria. Uh, so let's, before going there, let's go to a quick story about Socrates. So his disciple came to him. Socrates, Socrates, did you, did you know about something? Gotta tell you something about your friend. And then his uh, uh, Socrates, okay, wait, did you go for the three sieves, sieves, Peneira, filter? Oh, I was going to bring, mm. I put on the table, I forgot, I was going to bring a sieve, sieve. And then, uh, it's like, what? And then, well, d uh, did you, the first uh, sieve, did you, uh, what you're going to say, is it true? And then, it's like, uh, um, I don't know. Okay. So the second seed. Is it good? No. Okay, then the third one. Is it useful to me? No. Well, then you can save me time and save yourself time. So those the Socrates seeds uh, are for us to apply whenever we're going to talk about somebody else. You can start to put this filter. And now the other, we're going to use the seeds for truth. Those are different. So, well, one of Socrates seeds is for truth. Now, how uh, some tools to help us to determine for ourselves what truth is. Not that we are going to be saved if we accept this truth or if we have to accept it. Just tools to help us to make the choice. And later we apply to incarnation. So reasoning. This is um, uh, reason, right? Uh, that's how our science is mostly based on reason. Things have a logic, cause and effect. So if you, somebody tells you something and makes no sense, it's harder to really accept that as true. And then moral. Well, if your boss tells you you, you you have to follow your boss because it's your job and it's our job, right? And if the boss tells me to do something that's against my moral and it's really hard, uh, like something that I would really never do, then I have my reasoning but I have my moral. And that would be kind of like tough to, to follow. I would probably quit my job or tell my boss, convince my boss. So, for us to, to accept something as true, it also has to be congruent with our moral, with uh, the divine laws inside of us, the part of the law that we already developed. And then we can accept or not. And then experience too. So uh, even though the science said something, but if it doesn't match with my experience, my subjective experience, it's hard to accept. So I gotta go and experiment. And okay, now I understand. And Alan Kardec talks about the objective and subjective. So when we go to, even, even science, we can think about science also has a subject, subjective experience. So when we go to the doctor, what, uh, say you have a flu or something, you have some kind of issue, and you tell the doctor, what does he ask you? Your symptoms? Yeah, and then, yeah, I have a, a, I'm coughing, and then what else he might ask me? And then when it started? When it started, yeah. Temperature, okay, temperature is measurable, so that's uh, so, uh, objective. And does he ask you, how do you feel? Yeah, on a scale one to five. How do you feel? Then it goes subjective. So even science has to use subjective because some things, uh, sci it's, it's very hard for science to get there without the subjective. And in, in, in incarnation, we have that aspect. So universality, here's the idea of, um, for something to be true, it's, uh, 
cannot be single to one person or this specific group. Everybody else, they uh, don't. No, it has to be broad. Uh, the truth doesn't come only for one person or for one group. Or only now, before today or before Alan Kardec, there was never reincarnation nobody talked about it. So now Alan Kardec discovered this new law of the nature. So that would, not, would be hard to accept as true. And they, 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 the word used was globality that I found on the book. Uh, but I decided to use coherence because nowadays globality kind of have a different meaning. <coughs> like we have uh, global companies, we behave, interact with change in China and India, etc. So uh, here I chose the change the, for the word coherence because that's the idea. So for something to be true, it's easier for us to understand when it's coherent with all the things that we already accept as true. So if it's uh, a concept that goes against the others, then we're going to be in conflict. It's going to be incongruent. Okay, so now let's apply those seeds, those filters, to reincarnation. And there's a lot of stuff, it's, very, uh, it's hard to choose what to bring here. Um, uh, but we're going to cover some of them and give some reference. If I would suggest all of us to go uh, and study more and go deeper. Uh, so let's start with the reason. What is the reason for uh, child prodigies, right? Some kids, they are super smart. Um, some kids, they are super good in arts, uh, like Mozart, starting uh, composing the many symphonies. So young and self-taught. And this girl today, she should be 18, Akiane Kramarik. So when she was four, she started to... Oops, no. What happened here? I think it's this way. Yeah. So when, so when she was four years old, she uh, had a dream that God or an angel came talk to her and brought her to different places, different kind of worlds or different dimensions. So she traveled in her dreams and tried to tell her to paint about what she saw. And four years old, she self-taught herself to start drawing. And then four years old, and she really liked the drawing faces. She lives, I forgot, uh, well, she moved to so many places, but she's li she lives in the U.S. And then, age of six, she starts at the colors. She wakes up super early in the morning and paints for hours. She records, so we can see online her painting. And she, she studies uh, th those objects in nature. So, at age of eight, there's a very interesting story that she, she wants. And, oh, by the way, so she's a uh, daughter of atheist parents. They used to be atheist. Atheist. Atheist, yeah. So, uh, and, but she believes in God by herself. So it's not like influence of the parents. Like people believe, uh, they believe uh, many people believe their, their religion is passed by the parents or by uh, society. So she brought from herself. In the same way, she brought her skills and her will to paint. And I don't understand so much about painting, but if you think about uh, when you see the videos, like how she covers with the layers, it has to be somebody that knows. I'm going to do this color because later when I put the other color on top, it has to, put, to create this effect. And in the end, I want to have this result. So it can be somebody who never painted before. And, and so she wanted to paint Jesus, and she closed herself, locked in a room, and she made a prayer asking God to show how Jesus was to her. So the next day in the morning, somebody knocked on the door. It was a carpenter. And the carpenter offered to be a model for her painting. So she painted this uh, Prince of Peace. Ah! No internet, sorry. <laughs> and this was 2002, so she was at age eight. And in 2010, uh, scientists, they were reproduced using computers, the, the face of Jesus. And the matching, I think, is about 80 to 90% of her painting. And her, her, her paintings are uh, very valuable. The originals are sold for uh, thousands of dollars. I think it, it, might, it might be millions of dollars. She paints the universe. She paints emotions. And she also self-taught to play piano. And she's a poet. So how can we explain this phenomena uh, without, um, without reincarnation? We have to create some kind of theories that become harder to believe than reincarnation. And also, for those of us who have the very strong concept of moral God, how can God uh, even, uh, so even if you like your both children, you love them both, would you put one in the 
best school of the valley, best university, and the other one is the worst one, even if the other one behaves bad, like, would you do that? So, would God do this to us? Give some of them better? The gifted kids, as if God gave them a gift, and they didn't acquire it by themselves. It wouldn't match with our, uh, in philosophical way, uh, it wouldn't match with our sense of fairness. And I strongly recommend look at her website, akiani.com. She's been in news many places. And then there's a lot of research done in science. Um, so Dr. Jan Stevenson's, uh, I believe, study for 40 years, uh, children that remember past lives. The same thing by themselves, parents didn't believe in reincarnation, and, and they start to tell stories, and the parents start to investigate. And then, so he studied a lot of them around the world, and to find the, the person who they claim to be reincarnation, the re past reincarnation. And those are some of many books, uh, professor of um, University of Virginia. And then Jim Tucker continued uh, his work, he took over. The other one already retired, you know, already disincarnated. And so the, Jim Tucker is now studying the US, and some of, uh, the, I think, two, at least two cardiac radio interviews with him. Very cool. And this is interesting also in 2014, so last year, February, many scientists, I believe more than 100, they came to uh, renowned scientists in the world. They came together to, with this manifesto for post-materialist science. And those are not, are not the only ones who believe in something else uh, more than uh, material. And if you're interested, go ahead on the website and take a look into what they're saying. So they're talking uh, basically in the idea of, uh, so let me go scroll down to the, the list of them many different countries in the world, states in the U.S., universities. Uh, Dr. Vanessa Ancelon is there. Um, Deepak Chopra also. Um, so it's very interesting how they're saying that, uh, and it's important for us also, we, uh, just because uh, the mainstream science might be still materialistic, we should not deny that because, uh, because of this very strong uh, belief of scientists of proving the things and through measure, uh, we got where we, we got the technologies and the science we have nowadays. Uh, but they're saying we, we should not deny that, but we should just be open um, to understand things that are beyond matter, that matter cannot explain. And uh, eliminate our preconceptions and be open to explanations that can, um, they are connected to the phenomena that we experience and that if you only think about matter, we wouldn't be able to explain. So the moral part, um, I'd recommend also this chapter, I believe it's chapter 4 of uh, the Gospel according to Spiritism. Different passages where Jesus says that there was a belief that Elias was going to come back. And then Jesus said, here he come. He was John the Baptist. And if reincarnation was a concept that uh, was wrong, why wouldn't Jesus fight against it, right? So, uh, if we follow uh, some Edenic books, uh, Jesus ex talked about reincarnation in internal groups, not publicly, uh, but he did talk about it. But it's not so uh, easily, not, not easily find the Bible. Uh, Kardec points, like I believe, like three of them, and then Kardec also goes to Job and finds other passage where we have the concept of incarnation. And... And incarnation goes with our moral, the God that it's fair. He gives us chances. He doesn't have favorites. So more on experience. So this psychiatrist, Brian Weiss, I think many of if you heard of him. He has this um, many books. And he didn't start by himself. So he was doing uh, hypnotherapy. And then some patients start to go back, go back, go back, and go back to past lives. And then, so he's been studying, experiencing this, uh, this concept of past life regression. It's, again, spiritism doesn't recommend everybody to do. Um, it should be very specific cases. Um, so don't just go because you're curious, want to see what you were in past life. One common question is, why do, why do you forget? If you really have past lives, why don't you remember? I don't remember what happened to me when I was two, year, two years old, right? Um, I don't remember past lives either. 
So why not? That's the, the fairness of God because it would be very hard. It would be tough to remember so many bad things that I did. I might have killed, I might have stolen, um, you the traitor. I wouldn't accept myself. So we bring this uh, complex of guilty, we bring to here, and Spiritism is helping us to, to forgive ourselves, because the only way we can forgive others is when we can forgive ourselves. And if we, if we remember them, then it will be much harder to, to forgive ourselves. And also forgive others who have come, uh, my mother, my kids, my wife, what they have done to me in past lives, it would, it would be very hard for me to remember. And, but we bring, uh, in a very subtle way, we bring those things. So I can analyze myself and see my defects. And okay, I, I was this, I was that, I caused this harm to others. And then, so these books, they help us uh, on dealing with that too. And there is one example where uh, Alivio says a story that this uh, mother, she, she had two kids, and she really had something very strong against the baby. And she couldn't know, she wanted to kill him, but she loved him, so it was very hard for her. And he didn't have done anything back to her. He was a baby. And then she went through the past life regression therapy. And she found that in past lives, he was a lover of her. He was a lover of her. And seduced her. And then she got pregnant and abandoned her. And in that time, nowadays, already hard man in that time. And then she was abandoned by the family. And she had to go to a house of, um, like, Magdalena. And... She got uh, sickness, uh, syphilis, and then she died. So she had this hate for him, everything that he caused to her. And then after developing the forgiveness, she was able to get to the point to accept him as a son. And when she gets here, you don't remember exactly what it is, but you still have something. So this life is a life for her to practice forgiving and forgiving each other, understanding each other. She might not be able to love this, the son the same way she would love the other, but to practice, once she's aware, she can go and practice. So this goes to the subjective part of reincarnation. She was not told that happened to her life. It came from her unconscious mind. And then universality. So this is very interesting. This picture, it's not updated. There should be more dots everywhere in the picture. Um, so the Egyptians, uh, 3,000 years ago, they had the concept of reincarnation. They believed they on it. Um, Hinduism, also thousands of years ago, up to nowadays, we have Fu Tsi in China, one of the oldest um, like masters of our planet, sent by Jesus, as in Spiritists believe the, on the way of the light, uh, Camino da Luz. And then we have the Celts in Europe, we have in Judaism Kabbalah. We have uh, Taoism from Lao Tse. So Confucius, um, I, in this source here, reincarnationexperience.org, he mentions other books that says that Confucius was reincarnationist. Um, I couldn't investigate more, so I put a question mark here. But my intuition says that he was too. So other master of China. And then Buddha from Hinduism, he also uh, believed the reincarnation and preached that. And then in Greece, Pythagoras, and then later Socrates, very great master, uh, and Plato, his disciple, follow. Then Jesus Christ, so this is, most of the Christians still don't believe that he preached reincarnation, um, but most, and we already looked at some of the, his passages. The, and even if you go to, uh, to books written by spirits in psychography, they tell stories where Jesus talks about reincarnation naturally. And then we have other European groups. I didn't put it here, all of them, but I found other, and they have to research more. The Inca Empire, and I believe the Aztecs might have been two other American groups, African groups. So this, this, uh, this link here, he goes for many other ones. So it's a, it's a work for us to explore and to see if it's really a reliable source. And then if you get to the 19th, 20th, and 21st century. So is spiritualism. So here, all of them, if they believe in reincarnation, they believe in spirit. It's in spirit. So they, they are spiritualistic. So here, putting quotes, because uh, there's also some uh, movements, more recent ones, 
a little bit before Kardec that were they self call themselves spiritualism. And then spiritism um, uh, through the work of Alain Kardec, but it's not his creation, it's creation of spirits all around the world and from poor families, for rich families, no matter which country, which belief, these communications came. And he applied all these sieves to to choose what should be what should stay on the books and what should not be. And he says, if science, so that goes the congruence, uh, coherence, if science proves something that I have said it was wrong, then you should follow science. And we have this great master for previous century, Gandhi and Chico Xavier, another one who preached reincarnation and believed. And we have science as a call here. They use the term open science, but it's more broad than this manifesto that we saw. Um, so the, the coherence, just to recap, is the idea that um, if, for example, the belief that uh, God created man, Adam and Eve, from, uh, from the soil, and then science, by research, finds evidence that man uh, existed many years earlier, thousands of years earlier, right? So if we accept literally the Bible this way, it's not congruent. So the, the, the piece on the puzzle will not fit. So uh, one way to interpret this is that the Bible is not talking about specific men. It's talking about uh, maybe a community of people, like Emmanuel says in the, uh, the Egyptians and the other ones, the expelled from Capella. And when you go to the Bible, the word was prayed in seven days, which is against science. But if you think about days like eras, then it makes more sense. And as we said, the reincarnation, it's coherent with all the theories, and so far there's nothing that goes and proves it's wrong. So uh, although the mainstream science is not uh, accepted reincarnation, it can be forerunners because it has a meaning for our lives. If we truly believe incarnation, would we believe in the way we are living now? What would, uh, what would we have been doing different, differently if we truly believe in incarnation, right? and this blessing of God. So again, we return, repeat. Uh, it's God's uh, mercy, love, in the spirit, uh, spirit plus body. Body helps the spirit to progress, us to progress in action. We progress through action. We don't progress reading books. It's no matter if we go read all these books, all of them, we are able to explain, to do lectures. That doesn't matter, like Paulo said. What matters is the love developed in our hearts. So we should take action and start to feel more. And with action on charity and humility, this is a, a suggestion. With charity, practicing child will develop love inside of us and be purifying. And by practicing being humble, you cannot be humble right away, so we have to practice. If I say I'm humble, I'm, it's just a mess. So I have to understand that it takes time for me to build that. But I can practice, and the more I become humble, the closer I get from the truth. So let's do this. Uh, it's very important for us to uh, learn to experience. So I would suggest, um, if you want to close your eyes, and I'm going to play a song. The song is in Portuguese, but I'm going to read in English. Try to experience everything that we talked about tonight.
life is not my comes from the power of love So let us experience our inner transformation and receive the blessing of the reincarnations to us. Now we're going to the past. Somebody's going to invite us. It's not uh, mandatory. Chago is going to prepare the water. Play the song again? Maybe I can push on it. 